Air Canada and Porter are two of the most popular airlines in all of Canada, but which is the best and which is the worst? So up first today, we're gonna be flying Air Canada and I've flown their Rouge and business class before, but I've never actually reviewed their normal economy. So it's gonna be super exciting. And last night when I was doing the check-in process, we got off to a surprisingly smooth start. So after getting the check-in email, I was brought to the main site before picking my seat, agreeing to having no explosives, declining a paid upgrade, confirmed my baggage type, and then I was all checked in and ready to go. Now, even though the check-in went super smooth, Air Canada is known for its delays and cancellations, so I'm slightly terrified. But now that we're all checked in, we're gonna head inside the terminal to grab our boarding pass. And remember, after Air Canada, we're gonna be flying Porter to see which one is actually the better airline. Making my way into the airport, things were super busy, but not at the Air Canada desk. So I made my way to one of the kiosks, agreed to not having any more explosives, scanned my passport, then I was able to print my boarding pass for today's flight. All right, so surprisingly, that one super smooth and I'm also kind of shocked that it is this dead. Normally no matter where I am with Air Canada it's always packed and super busy but I guess there's just not many Canadians in Vegas right now. But anyways now that we have the boarding pass and we're TSA pre-checked we're gonna head through security and find a lounge because apparently there's this really cool Centurion lounge so I'm gonna try and find it and then after that we're gonna board the Air Canada flight to see what they're actually like. And thankfully today I was TSA pre-checked so getting through security was super fast. All right well security went surprisingly well. Yet again, I wasn't randomly selected or searched, which is hilarious because every time I travel in the States, it doesn't happen. But whenever I'm in Canada, I do get searched. But anyways, now that we're through security, I'm actually going to switch terminals to try and find this super cool lounge. So hopefully I'm allowed in because apparently it is insane. Now in order to get there, I had to take an escalator downstairs in order to catch a train which would bring me to the terminal with the lounge. So the reason why I'm a little bit stressed that they won't let me in the lounge is because it says I need a US credit card and I only have a Canadian one. And on top of that, my boarding pass is for another terminal. So let's see what happens. And thankfully, after making it to the Centurion Lounge, I got some good news. All right, so thankfully I was allowed in. Let's check this place out. After making my way inside, the first thing I noticed was how much seating there was for guests, and also the entire place was filled with Vegas-themed decor. Now, I had to go to the washroom, which was super nice, but for some reason, it had only one stall. But that's when I realized this lounge has two separate bathrooms, along with two separate bars for drinks. But now I think it's time we check out the food. For breakfast, there was baked goods like muffins, croissants, banana bread, apple strudel, eggs, hash browns, nachos, boiled eggs, yogurt, tons of different fresh fruits to choose from, hot oatmeal, coffee, fresh juice, and a super futuristic water fountain. So obviously I loaded up and things were delicious. All right, so that was the best lounge I have ever been to. The staff were super nice. The food was unreal. There was tons of space. It wasn't super busy. And for a non-airline branded lounge, I'm gonna have to give that a solid 10 out of 10. It was actually that good. And now that we're all done in the lounge, I literally have about 10 minutes before my flight board. So I thought I'd take this time to tell you guys a little bit more about Air Canada, just in case you've never flown them before or have no idea what they are. Right off the bat, Air Canada is the eighth largest airline in North America, being rated second overall by Skytrax, but unfortunately it was only rated three out of five stars on TripAdvisor with some super mixed reviews. On one hand, you have people complaining about how they're plagued with delays, that they're awful, and it was someone's worst flight experience. But on the other hand, you have people who don't understand the hate, love Air Canada, and rave about how comfortable and relaxing it is. So when it comes to Air Canada, pretty much all of the negative reviews have to do with delays or cancellations. And unfortunately, every single time I fly with them, this seems to be the case. But besides that, they're actually supposed to be pretty good. But the only way to truly find out is by taking that flight. So we're gonna head to the gate right now and see what Air Canada is actually like. And hopefully we don't get delayed or canceled because that would be really bad. So hopping back on the train, I made my way to the main terminal before making my way through the airport and finally getting to the gate just as boarding was about to begin. All right, so it looks like Air Canada is actually on time and it's not canceled. But even though they're on time, what really matters is the flight. So let's get on board and see what it's actually like. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Eric, on the flight line and look at the camera, please. Fine, sir. I swear to God, Air Canada has one of the longest boarding processes ever. It's also terrifying that they have a biometric scan that reads your face to get you on board. Slightly concerning, but let's see what the flight's like. Morning. 
Making my way through the cabin, the first thing I noticed was that things were in a modern 3x3 layout, and after arriving at my seat, I was super happy to see there was in-flight entertainment. But how about the comfort test? Well, checking things out, at first glance, it all appeared to be quite nice, but we'd need to wait until later on to see how comfy it actually is. Moving on to the armrest, I was happy to see that this seat came with a respectable amount of recline. And then checking out the space for bags, there was plenty of room both under the seats and in the overhead, which is always a good sign. All right, so right off the bat, some initial thoughts. There is an in-flight entertainment system, but it says the system's not working. So hopefully that changes and it's just like a bug or something like that, because this is a three and a half hour flight. So it would suck if it's not working, because on top of that, when there's in-flight entertainment, I don't think it gives the option for you to use your own devices. So we'll see how that goes. Now, as for the seat, it's kind of comfy. It's a little bit on the stiffer side, but there's tons of space under the seat for bags and even on the overhead too. And another thing that I noticed is that boarding is taking forever, and this is supposed to be a completely full flight so hopefully we end up taking off on time now looking around the seats some more i noticed things were actually extremely clean in areas which are normally dirty and i also noticed there was a full-size power outlet with the seat and also some extra usb ports under the tv which i really hope ends up working checking out my view i noticed i had two large windows which was great and thankfully both the reading lamp and air conditioning was working but my only real complaint so far is that the leg room was definitely on the tighter side of things for someone only 5'8 but anyways it was it was now 7.23 and I noticed we had finally began pushing back from the gate to start taxiing. For the first flight of the day, we're going to be traveling roughly three and a half hours from Las Vegas to Vancouver and after making it to the runway, it was time for takeoff. And though we were in the air, I wanted to check out the pouch to see what was inside, and after pulling out the safety pamphlet, which was pretty standard, I noticed the in-flight entertainment started to work, so it's time to check that out. After selecting my language, I was brought to the main menu, where up first, I wanted to check out the movies, which turned out to have a massive selection of new releases, along with a ton of TV series. Making my way to the audio, there was lots of music and also some podcasts to choose from, but some of the other features included the weather forecast for the destination, new sites, but my favorite was the interactive map which was the highest quality I've seen on any airline, which was amazing. But as I was finishing up, I noticed the crew coming around for the in-flight service, so it's time to check out what's on the menu. Air Canada has combos, tons of different breakfast or meal options, along with a bunch of different snacks and drinks too. So I decided to pull out my tray table, which was quite large, and it's safe to say I got an entire meal. Okay, so something pretty funny just happened. So it turns out when I booked my ticket a month ago, I prepaid for a meal. So when they were coming around with a the card, they said, oh, you have a meal. And I was super confused. I was like, wait, what? And then they explained to me it's because I bought this thing a month ago. And pretty much the way that works is if you buy a meal in advance for $10, you get one of the main meals plus two snacks, which if I bought on the flight would have cost me like $25. So I'm not really complaining because I just saved a ton of money. And on top of that, I was starving. So it was absolutely delicious. And while I was finishing up my snacks, I decided to look around a bit more, and overall I was super impressed with the quality of things since everything was in super good condition and it was also really clean. Okay, so we're about halfway through the flight now, so I thought I'd share my thoughts so far. When I was first doing the comfort test, I thought these seats were pretty uncomfortable, but they're actually not too bad. They are definitely on the stiffer side, but surprisingly they're comfortable. Normally at this point on other airlines, my back would be pretty sore, but two hours in, we're still good to go. On top of that, another thing that's really good is that the in Play entertainment started working so I was actually able to check that out and to make things even better they had recently updated their in-flight entertainment so it's a brand new map system there's tons of new movies which is super nice to see and the only other thing that I could really think of that I noticed was that the staff are incredibly friendly on this flight and so far we have about an hour left until landing and there's still a few things that I need to check out so we're gonna go do that and hopefully the rest of the flight is just as good but since there was only about an hour left I think it's time to check out the bathroom Making my way inside, things were definitely pretty tight and on the smaller end, but overall there was still all of the essentials and the headroom wasn't terrible either. But now, as I made my way back to my seat, I noticed we had begun our descent into Vancouver, and before I knew it, we were coming in for land.
remember, this was only the first flight, and now we have to fly Porter to see which is actually the better airline. All right, now that we're done with Air Canada, up next, we're gonna be flying Porter. And the only time I've ever flown Porter on their jets, it was an unreal experience. So I have a feeling it's gonna be super hard to decide which is actually gonna be better. But so far last night when I was doing the online check-in experience, we got off to a pretty solid start. After getting the check-in email, I was brought to the main site before confirming my bag type, selecting my seat, agreeing to not having anything dangerous, then I was all checked in and ready to go. So now that we're all checked in and ready to go, let's head inside and grab our boarding pass, and then we're finally gonna see which is better, Air Canada or Porter. And I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty close. So after making my way into the airport, I made my way to the Porter check-in area where I put in my confirmation code into the kiosk, confirmed my details, agreeing again to not having anything dangerous, and then I was able to finally print my boarding pass. All right, so I was able to get my boarding pass with pretty much no issues, which is super good. And as a bonus, I'm also in the window, which is awesome. Now, when it comes to Porter, a lot of people don't fly them, so there's a very good chance I'm gonna have the entire row to myself. But before we get to that, we have to head through Canadian security. And every time I go through, for some reason, they double inspect me and search my bags. So let's see if I could get through without that happening. And I wish I was kidding, but after finally getting to security, they decided to randomly search my bag before even going through the scanner and again after the scanner too. I wasn't kidding. It happens literally every single time. The funniest part about that is I literally predicted it before going through security. At that point, they hadn't seen my camera. I put it away and I put it in my backpack because I know I'll have to anyways. And I don't want to call it racial profiling because I'm white, but I totally just got profiled and searched before. And then they pulled my bag aside and searched me again. And just because it happened, so often I asked them if I was allowed to record it just to prove that it always happens to me. So now you guys know when I say I get double inspected at the airport I'm not kidding and it always happens in Canada. But anyways because that entire situation took so long I am starving. So I think what I'm gonna do now is try and find a lounge and then we're gonna finally board the Porter flight. Now for the second lounge of the day I was checking out the Plaza Premium and making my way inside I was greeted by a bar and an extremely busy seating area. But what was the food like? Well for lunch there was buns, tortellini, mashed potatoes, chicken, beef, pretzels, cookies, chips, a salad bar, and a fridge full of desserts. So I grabbed some to eat and overall things were pretty decent. All right, so overall I'd have to give that lounge a solid 8.5 out of 10. It was super nice and super modern. The staff were awesome. The food was actually unreal. And pretty much the only downsides I can think of was it was super busy and there was a limited food selection. But anyways, I'm actually running super late because I forgot what time boarding started at. So really quick, I'm gonna tell you guys some things about Porter because unless you're Canadian, 99% of you guys will have no idea what they are. Right off the bat, unlike Air Canada, Porter is so small that they don't even make the list of North America's largest airlines because they have the 19th smallest fleet on the entire continent. But despite this, they're rated higher than Air Canada at three and a half stars, but they also have some mixed reviews. On one hand, people say they're terrible with rude staff, that you get what you pay for, and that Porter has a long way to go. But on the other hand, people say it exceeded expectations, that they're 10 out of 10, and that it was someone's best airline experience. So overall, the reviews for them are pretty positive. Positive. And like I said earlier, the one time that I flew them before, it was unreal. But when I did fly them, it was one of their first flights ever, so things could be completely different now. So let's head to the gate and hopefully we don't end up missing this flight. And getting to the gate, I was just in time as boarding was about to close. Hi there. Thank you, I appreciate that. Time to find out if Porter or Air Canada is the better airline. Hello. Hi there. Thank you. Making my way onto the plane, the first huge difference is that Porter has a 2x2 two two interior compared to the 3x3 three three on Air Canada. And after making it to my seat, it was time for the comfort test. Right away, I noticed that these seats had a ton of padding to them, and compared to Air Canada, I'd have to say that these were definitely on the comfier side. Making my way under the seat, the space for bags was pretty comparable to the flight from earlier, with both airlines also having full-size power outlets, but unfortunately, these overhead bins were much smaller, so Air Canada takes the point there. Now looking at the seats some more, the only other downsides I could find was that the leg room was super tight for being only five foot eight. And another thing was that there was also no in-flight entertainment, but there was complimentary free Wi-Fi. All right, so some initial thoughts. The seat is quite comfortable. I really like the two by two as opposed to the three by three because you will never have someone stuck in the middle. So you're either gonna have the window or the aisle, which is awesome. As well, the price on Porter is super cheap compared to other airlines, which I'll tell you guys about a little bit more at the end of the video. And the only real downside that I could notice is the leg room is a little bit 
tight. And checking out the seats some more, I had access to one and a half windows and making my way to the pouch, there were a few things to look at. First up is the reporter magazine, which has all of the information about the two types of aircraft Porter flies, a small sample of their onboard cafe and a map of the destinations they currently fly to. Besides that, the only thing else in the pouch was the safety pamphlet, which is quite standard. But what really made me happy was that this plane was super clean. And after checking out the reading lamp and air conditioning, we started to push back from the gate. For the second flight of the day, I was going to be flying four and a half hours from Vancouver to Toronto, and after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. Now that we were in the air, I was able to connect to the in-flight Wi-Fi, so obviously we need to do that. After selecting the network and clicking let's go on the pop-up, I was brought to Safari, and in order to connect to the Wi-Fi, all I had to do was sign in with my loyalty number, and I was able to access it for completely free. All right, so now that we're in the air, I thought I'd share my thoughts a little bit more. So when it comes to the Wi-Fi on Porter, the best thing about it is it is completely free. And it's not like some airlines where the Wi-Fi will just work for messaging. It works for literally everything. And compared to the Air Canada flight from earlier that didn't have any Wi-Fi whatsoever, that is a huge win. Now, obviously, the one downside to Porter is there is no in-flight entertainment. But since the Wi-Fi is fast enough, you can watch YouTube, Netflix, and do anything you want. So in that sense, it's pretty much just as good. Now, at this point in the flight, I noticed the service had started coming around. So I pulled out the cafe menu to check it out. First off, Porter has tons of complimentary snacks and drinks, including wine. And as for the meals, there were tons of different options to choose from. And they were also much healthier compared to the options on Air Canada, which is super important to me. Now, after finishing up at the menu, I decided to check out the tray table, which turned out to be quite comparable to the flight from earlier. And I decided to get a glass of wine along with a ton of snacks. All right, so now that I'm about halfway through the flight, I thought I'd go ahead and share my thoughts on it so far. So at the start of the flight, I mentioned how the seat was a little bit on the stiffer side, but it's actually just as comfortable as Air Canada. It's kind of surprising because normally when a seat is on the stiffer side, you would think it would hurt, but I'm about three hours into the flight and my back is totally fine. Now, another thing when comparing the seats between Porter and Air Canada is the leg room on this one is a little bit tighter. And being only five foot eight, I don't notice much of an issue, but if you're taller than me, you might not have as comfortable of an experience. And I'll be honest, Porter is extremely comparable to Air Canada, and it's gonna be really hard to decide which of the two is actually better. And since there's only about an hour and a half left, it's gonna be interesting to see how I feel by the end of it. But so far, things are going pretty good. So now that the flight was coming to an end, I thought that now would be a good time to check out the bathroom. After getting inside, I noticed things were super clean and up to date, but the headroom was certainly a little bit tight considering I'm only five foot eight. But anyways, after making it back to my seat, the cabin lights had been fully dimmed as we began our descent into Toronto, and before I knew it, we were coming in for landing. So now one question remains, is Air Canada or Porter the better airline? Well, when Air Canada isn't delayed, it's always a good choice, having many more destinations compared to Porter. But when it comes to the actual in-flight experience itself, I tend to enjoy Porter a bit more, especially because of the 2x2 layout. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch this one next, where I flew America's best and worst airline.